Welcome back to this second part lecture on perceptual disorders. In the first part, we had seen an introduction about uh, what is a perceptual disorder and how is it different from sensory disorder. And then we saw what could be the different forms of this perceptual disorders that could affect a person with brain injury. So in this second part, we are going to look into one particular disorder called body scheme and body image disorder. And we are going to go pretty deep into it. You will be understanding what are the different ramifications of this. The first type of problem in body image is called as unilateral neglect. Image and scheme are different. First, we will look into image disorder. So unilateral neglect. Now, what's a unilateral neglect? Unilateral neglect is characterized by failure to report or respond to people or objects presented to the side opposite to that of a brain lesion. So, if a person is having a stroke, he might actually not be perceiving one half of his body. For example, in this you see that a person can take things that he has only one half, which is his left half, and he does not have his right half. So, anything which is being given from that side, he might start ignoring. So, there are different types of unilateral neglect. The first type of unilateral neglect is called as a sensory neglect, where it is only the sensory input that the patient starts neglecting. The second type is called as motor neglect. He might be getting the sensation, he might be understanding the sensation, but when you ask him to move, there might be problem in moving one side of the body. This is not, not because of any type of weakness in the body. And the third one is a representational neglect. We will look into what's a representational neglect in a short time. So first is sensory neglect. Sensory neglect is defined as being unaware of sensory stimuli on the side of the body or space which is commonly opposite to that of a brain lesion. In a sensory neglect, it can be further categorized into visual neglect, auditory neglect or a tactile neglect. So, in this picture, this is a picture drawn by a patient who had a visual neglect. There was a picture of a cat which was given and she was asked to copy this picture of this cat and draw it onto her. So she has very beautifully drawn and you can see that the face is there of the cat complete. But you see that one half of the body image of the cat is completely not there. So. In the picture which was given, it was there, but when she copied on, she had copied only a half part of it. So this kind of problem is called as a visual neglect and it predominantly occurs when there is lesion which is close to your occipital lobe, but it is in the junction of occipital and your parietal lobe. Similarly, we can have um, auditory neglect. Now, auditory neglect uh, would not be a very, very uncommon phenomena for all of us. Whenever our parents speaks about uh, our growth or our taking care of our, ourselves, we commonly tend to neglect those words. When a teacher tells that uh, you need to prepare for an assignment and come for the next day or you need to read up the particular topic and come for the next day, we normally get it, right? Of course, uh, it is just for a joke that I'm telling, but uh, in reality, uh, when a patient is there, they will be particularly selectively neglecting inputs from some areas. And the third is a tactile neglect, in which if you give somatosensory information from one side, say for example, you're touching a person on one side, he might not, he might not be able to perceive that. So. In reality, he might actually tell that someone is touching, but he might not be telling that it's coming from the affected side. He might be telling it's coming from the other side. So that's called as a tactile neglect. Now, these are the three forms of sensory neglect. Now, the next one is a motor neglect. In a motor neglect, a person might not be moving that half of the body, but this one could manifest in different forms. For example, if you give a painful stimulus to the person, the, stim the person might not be completely aware about it and he might not move the body part. It's natural for all of us to move a body part whenever a painful stimulus comes, but this person who is having a motor neglect might not move. 
rather sometimes it might not present itself as a complete inability to move sometimes they might be moving but it might be of a smaller uh, distance the range through which they move might be very less or they might be moving very very slowly these are also different forms of motor neglect the next type of neglect is representational neglect where a person ignores the a contralational half of internally generated image now what is this internally generated image now i want all of you to pause the video now and before pausing the video close your eyes and now you try to recall what is in front of you you might very well recall where is a switchboard where is a glass tumbler in front of you where are the cloths kept now most of this you would be able to recall now for sake of recalling i want you to pause this video for a minute and try recalling all the uh, objects which are there in front of you by closing your eyes also try recalling objects which are there behind you yeah yeah so now you would have uh, now you would know that whatever objects are there in front on the side of us have an image within our brain and this can be pretty much affected in case of representational neglect now now this representational neglect now we can see the image of a, of a house a person when he goes out he can see only one half of the house he cannot see the other half of the house so this particular representational neglect could be that of a personal neglect where a person may fail to dress one half of the body or when he is combing he might comb only one side and not the other side please don't confuse this with some of the uh, fashionable hairstyles which people get or keep at the present point of time that's not a personal neglect that is uh, extra care and in order to attract other people but what we are seeing here is a person who is having a personal neglect would not might not have combed so he might not have shaved one half of his face so this is called as a personal neglect so now a face is something which we don't see commonly it is something which is there as an internal image uh, during most of the uh, life most of the day normally when we see a mirror we come to a recognition but these people even when they see the face in a mirror they will fail to recognize what's there on one half of the face the other one is spatial neglect now personal neglect is when we neglect our own half of the body image which is there inside our brain but in a spatial neglect we neglect what is there externally and it could be a peripersonal which is on things which are close by to us for example in a complete plate you might have different material a person might eat from one half and he might uh, leave off the other half uh, um, of the he might not pick up food and eat from the other half of the plate this is an example of peri personal which is close by extra personal neglect is the one where the person has difficulty in seeing things which are further away so what happens is he might be able to see and tell what are there but when he walks on he might consistently go and hit against a uh, door wall and uh, this is called as a extra personal neglect when all of us move through a doorway we normally move through the center of the doorway but since this person uh, sees only a half of it he might be consistently moving uh, through only one side of the uh, doorway so this might lead to him colliding onto the wall of the door again this is called as extra personal neglect will give uh, um, second before going on further I, uh, what we have seen till now is we have seen about one particular disorder called as body image disorder and one of the most common body image disorder which commonly occurs in stroke patients especially during the early stage is unilateral neglect and unilateral neglect could be a sensory neglect could be a motor neglect or could be a representational neglect the representational neglect 
could be of uh, um, two different types it could be a personal or extra personal extra personal could be a peripersonal or sorry uh, extra personal or a peripersonal neglect so it could be of three types um, sensory neglect could be a visual neglect or auditory neglect or a tactile neglect and a motor neglect can happen either by absence of a movement to a stimulus or there might be a reduction in the quality of movement so now most of these unilateral neglect have been identified to occur in a particular region of your parietal cortex which is the inferoposterior region of the right parietal cortex this if there is a problem in this place you will have a unilateral neglect let us now move on and see what are the tests that are available for testing unilateral neglect there are multiple tests first is a line bisection test what we do is we keep place a paper in front of a patient and draw a line from right to left as that shown and we ask the person to mark in the center so if the person is going to see the complete line he is definitely going to mark in the center but if he is going to neglect one half of it so he will be mar he will leave that and he will mark in the center of half of the line which is going to be quarter way so that's your line bisection test a second test which is commonly used is called as a star cancellation test now what is this now in a star cancellation test we have this picture and we have larger stars smaller stars and we also have different letters written in we ask the we keep this paper in front of the person and we ask him to cancel only the smaller stars as you would have rightly guessed a person with a unilateral neglect would cancel stars from one half but he would leave it from the other half the next is a copying and drawing test in this we give a picture previously you saw a picture of a cat and this you see a picture which is slightly symmetrical that means both the sides look similar slightly and we ask the person to copy and draw this and you know what would be the result of it this is called as copying and drawing test a last pen and paper test could be a clock face test so in this we ask the person to write the numbers 1 to 12 in this if he is not having a neglect it would be equally distributed if he is having a neglect all the numbers from 1 to 12 would actually come within the one half of this clock the next test is a behavioral inattention test it is basically a combination of multiple tests it has six commonly used pen and paper test and nine behavioral tasks so the pen and paper test includes what you have seen previously like line crossing letter cancellation etc and the behavioral task include picture scanning we give him a picture and ask him to scan it and tell us all the features of a picture or uh, say for example uh, article reading we ask him to read the article and he would be consistently leaving from one half of it so it has many other tests this following nine tests are there the next tool is a Catherine Berger go scale this is a checklist for therapist and it's designed to assess the presence and severity of unilateral neglect in a range of daily activities the scale involves observing as well as evaluating the patient's function now these are some of the items which are there in the Catherine Berger Go scale. We observe a person, how he grooms, how he shaves, how he wears the left sleeve of his dress, how he eats food normally, etc. And we, um, we um, ask the person to perform different ideal activities. We observe him and then we uh, we score whether he is having a problem in that area or not right. so that completes our disorders of body image in reality we are going to have certain other body image disorder apart from unilateral neglect these are called as body scheme disorders now what is a body scheme disorder impairment in body scheme is a lack of awareness of body structure and the relationship of body part to oneself or to other now what it means is 
we all have an internal image of our body our head is above our neck our bo our body um, our trunk is below our head right so a person might be having a difficulty in conceiving this so uh, you might see that over here on the left side is the normal body image of a person and on the right side you might the person thinks that the relation between different body parts are different so you can see his leg is on the top his head is down and what's on the left side is on the right side so he might consistently perceive his body the relation between the body parts like this and so if a person is having this disorder you can think what would be the difficulties he would be facing in his daily life i want you to pause this video for a minute and then think what would be his response when he is trying to wear a shirt yeah so you would very clearly know that he might be trying to put the sleeve under through his foot so that could that's very common in a person with somato agnosia the test to identify this is called as trauma test we ask the patient to draw the diagram of a man and we note for any absence of a specific body part or abnormality in relation between the body parts now the next type of body scheme disorder is finger agnosia where a person finds it difficult to identify his own fingers so he might be misunderstanding his index finger and if you ask him where is show me your index finger he might be showing his ring or his little finger this includes difficulty naming the fingers on command so that completes the portion on body image disorders